Before we finish, Matt, um, I mentioned Trudeau's. Just, I, I know we delve a lot into the games that happened, but just something different. Maybe it could become a weekly thing where we're looking at just the top five. For this week, I just said to you, Limerick's, I suppose, most valuable players. And I, I don't mean it the, the best players. If you were picking 10 best players in the country, how many Limerick lads? What I was going for is who's the kind of most important to the team and how would they operate? Um, I asked for five. If you, I don't know if you did them in order of one to five or just five names. If you would just throw out one name there and I'll see if I have them on my list. Yeah, you'll, I, I presume you'll have the first one anyway, Nicky Quaid. Yeah, I had Nicky down on my team. And I suppose the roles of the goalie is only starting to kind of become more important to the general public. But I suppose Nicky has been there for, this is his 13th season. Um, I think since 2010, like, I'll let you talk about it more. We, we, we're, we'll definitely do a Quaid podcast one today. Well, I'm we're happy, Jack. <laughs> yeah, yeah look, we're definitely borderline, but... Like as, 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 as near as it's humanly possible to the perfect goalkeeper, you know, whether it's shot stopping, organizing his defense, he, his puck out, his distribution, he's got it all, Jack. Yeah, you know, a... and um, cool as a cucumber back, back there in the last line of defense, you know, absolutely indispensable. Yeah, I could say something now to, to annoy you about all stars, but I think I'll leave it off. But no, you well, do, do, just, don't, like, don't, please. Yeah, don't. like <laughs> just it's madness. The, the amount of all. I was so Stephen Cluxton is the same. He's up there with Cluxton in, in terms of importance to all Ireland winning oh, team. Absolutely, just absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I think the thing with, couldn't agree more with you. Absolutely. Um, oh, the, the 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 contribution of Nicky Quaid is just simply phenomenal. Oh. The thing with Nicky Quaid, I think... Don't, um, don't go to any of the All-Stars, Jack, please. He suffers in a way because of his reliability. So, like, you don't notice him doing all the good things because it just happens every game. It do does. He, and, and there's never bad things to talk about. So he's he rarely... He, 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 does, he does it. He makes it look routine, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. That's... Quaid, Quaid is one, anyway. Um, I'll give you... I had Keen Lynch on my list. I think it's fairly self-explanatory, but... I do think there's a huge there's a huge gap there eleven when he's not there. Um, I know when Kyle was there, it was just a different kind of game plan. But even for NUIG, for Patrick's well, for Limerick, obviously, like just he does things that no one else can do. He sees things that no one else can do. He's the best hurler in the country, bar none, I think. Oh, it's then yeah, no, no, no question about it. And then I have people saying that you know he did he didn't do this and he didn't do that with you with NUIG. I thought. Particularly in the final, um, um, if before he was bizarrely sent off, and I'm using that word copiously today, but um, yeah, um, I, I I thought he'd made a huge contribution. You see, um, a lot of people out there uh, tend to 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 judge people on on judge players on their final score tally, yeah, which is which is not a great metric if you like, um, so, certainly because. Like, uh, see the contribution Keen Lynch made in the All Ireland and the setting up of the goals. And, um, like, Keen Lynch is, is a creator. He, you know, he, he he creates scores, he makes things happen. And, um, oh, certainly, I agree totally with Keen Lynch. Yeah, I think for anyone that watches basketball, I don't know if you do, LeBron James has gone into second on the all time scoring list, but he's first and foremost a facilitator. And a bit like Keen Lynch, he, he wants that others free, but if he if the score is on and he needs to take it, he'll take it. Just can do it all. Like, Sorry, time, I, mean, I, missed, I missed that now. LeBron James, basketball player, he is gone into second in the all-time scoring charts in the NBA. But he himself, oh, yes. first, first and foremost, he is a facilitator. And I think Lynch is like that, can do it either way. Like He set up 2-5 in the first half at Ireland. Yeah, and got a point, and then got five points himself. In the, six, in the ended up with half. six. Ended up with six. Was it five or six points in the final? Six. So he was. If you took his half in either half, he'd be man the match regardless. Now you know, Peter Casey will, will look at that. I don't know if you if you've Peter Casey in your list. I didn't put him in my list, but I think the league has really shown how valuable Peter Casey is to this team as well. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. I don't have my list because we didn't see him play, but like just the the void. That's there from Peter hasn't really been filled. Um, we're going to well, well, of, course, of course, we didn't have to wait for the league to realize how valuable he is. 
yeah, but I suppose it just rubber stamped it. Um, because I suppose he was in and out of the team with Cottage Spade of Spade mm. from eight from 17 to 20, started in 17, didn't 18, did in 19, started the start of 2020, but then Flanagan came back in. So I think 2021 was really his year to say, yeah, that 15 jersey is mine, regardless of who's available. But um, your third person on that list, Barry Nash. Yeah, I, I I don't have Barry on my list. He was on my they, well, they were all shortlisted because they're all exceptionally good. But what? Why did you pick Barry Wilsa? Well, uh, we, we, we 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 knew about his versatility. Um, he you know Barry started off life as a forward, and a very very yeah. good one. He transitioned to half back. He transitioned to the full back line, left full back. He transitioned to right full back. He was captain of the Limerick team during the Munster Senior Cup. I thought he, he, he displayed extraordinary leadership qualities. And um, he, he certainly giving giving um, uh, John Kiley quite a headache, but he might ease his headache in, in yeah. some ways in that um, uh, the competition for the Limerick um, full back line is, is in, incredible when you, when you look at Sean Finn, Dan Morrissey and Barry Nash, um, the three men in situ, and and um, with with Mikey Casey and and uh, Richie English breathing down their neck. He's a bit like you know, a, a Swiss Army. You, you could you could say you could safely vacate um, Barry Nash and, and move him up the field to any position, literally. Yeah, I think um, Barry Nash is a very 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 good hurler. <laughs> yeah, um, and very 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 adaptable and. Um, you know, um, yeah, I, I, I think Barry Nash is invaluable because of what he brings um, yeah, and, and the, versatility, also... the versatility he brings. And you, you know something, Jack? You see players, and I've seen a number of players over the years that have suffered because of their versatility. Yeah. Barry Nash hasn't. He hasn't. And I think one thing that's <laughs> him in, in the corner is... He's a he's a corner forward's worst nightmare because not only is he a brilliant defender, he always wants to get forward, and it's your job. It's like if a cornerback scores, everyone knows who's marking him, whether he's five inches away from him or fifteen or like fifty yards away from him. Everyone knows that's your man that's gone. So I think having him back there is luxury. But yeah, you mentioned that there. I think we'll see Barry um away from the corner this year. I think there'll be a lot of rejigging, but we'll we'll look into that as time goes on. Um. Number three on my list here, I didn't do it in order, was William O'Donoghue. I don't know if he's on yours, but I just... Is he on yours? Yes. Um, For me, he just sets the tone from the throw-in. Like, he's the first man you see on the field. Um, And I think his importance is shown against the big teams. Like, Jamie Barron in the All-Ireland Final 2020, non-existent 2021 semi-final was the same. Dara Fitz last year in the final. Like, we see how good Dara Fitz is now. We saw how good he was in Limerick when Will wasn't on the field. He just sets the tone. Huge work rate. Brilliant player. Can take a point. Um, physicality, work rate, everything. Just a Rolls Royce midfielder. Yeah, I agree. I agree totally with everything you've said, Jack. Um, an absolute Rolls Royce of a midf- midfielder. Um, deservedly got his first all star. Um, should have probably should have got a should be certainly have a second all star, oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, like the 2020. 20, 20. Um, I, I didn't give him a, an all star in 2020 because the question you asked was who did I think would get it, and because, <laughs> because of the politics of it and various other things and accommodating players that, um, uh, that goes on with this thing. Um, I know that he, he would miss out, but he, he you know, if. If to strictly and solely on merit, Jack, Willem who would have been in all day, you know. Yeah. But his contribution is huge. A powerful man, as you said. Meets meets some of the best midfielders. And you mentioned the two games against Jamie Barron and, and the game against Dara Fitzgibbon. You know, Willem who you know, um, he, he's done it. He's done it. Does and his 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 contribution to the to the team and it, it's just invaluable. Uh, just absolutely invaluable because we're we're, we're talking about the the the, the 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 nub of this conversation, Jack, is uh, I I suppose importance and value to the team, isn't it? Yeah, that's 
That's because it. Okay. we, we all know what the Dermot Burns and the Declan Hannans of this world and what they give you, you know. But yeah, um, it, yeah I, I would have, I would have Willem O'Donoghue definitely right up there as one of the, the key players. Yeah, that's uh, Keen Lynch, uh, Nick Quaid, Will Donoghue, and uh, Barry Nash. That's you have the four of them. I have, I have three. Who is your fifth? Seamus Flanagan in full in good form. I don't have him there again. Chartless, but why Seamus Flanagan? Yeah, because when Seamus Flanagan is in good form, um, he has the capacity to upset defences. He's he's very athletic, very, very mobile, um, tends to cause all sorts of problems for fullbacks, and fullback is a crucial position. Most notably in last year's All Ireland final, Rob Downey was in a high until he came into the All Ireland final. You know, and but, but we, 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 we've seen it in different games. Um, his goal in the Munster final, yeah. you know, um, like I, I, in terms of valuable to the, value to the team, I would have Seamus Flanagan as one of the invaluable players. You see, basically what we're talking about is kind of valuable players that are unsung heroes, isn't it? Yeah, to an extent, I have, I, because well, I we have another know, harder to hear. We all know what Dermot Burns, we all know what Declan Hannon, we all know what Garod Hegarty, you know. Um, Kyle Hayes, all these. Yeah, yeah, no, look, it's not about talent. And Galan are going to bring to the table, you know. But, um, uh, I, you know, I, I, I think he's, um, I, I would have Seamus Flanagan down as a very, very valuable player. Yeah, I think it's important to note, like, we're not saying any player is better than the next player. That Limerick no, squad no, no. is, it's, it's, is it's absolutely It's not a comparison with other players, no. It's just, like, the five, like, you could have, like, our list is different. I have two different players to match. Like, the next fella might have five completely different players. Like, But it's just a, um, something different. I had um, Declan Hannon on my list, I think, just as a leader, first and foremost. Um, he might get on the ball as much as you'd, you'd like. I know some of the lads now I'm friendly with. Um, don't I suppose appreciate what he's doing, but Limerick like to drop the half backs or half forwards back a lot, and Declan Hannon is able to ping ball over that. He just he's just a brilliant striker. The ball he gets, he can get scores, and he wants. He scored in the two All Ireland finals. Um, he can break the lines. He's a brilliant reader. The ball. If if the fullback needs a hand, Declan Hannon is there to stop the ball. Clean. I just think he's the perfect number six himself. And Ty De Burka just have. They've essentially stopped a sweeper because they can be a centre back and a sweeper all in one. And I think like it allows you to have six forwards and you have Declan Hannon there. That's why I mean and Garot Hegarty, just energy, work rate, the sweetest skills. Like he scored seven points from playing in All Ireland final. Um mm. harder the year. Um he sets the tone like Garot Hegarty for the forwards. I think um huge physical presence can win puck outs, can win a chart, can win it medium, he can win it anyway. Um mm. I just think he's a brilliant player. I think he's in the top five see, Jack, when you when you talk about the five most valuable players, you could literally put the names into a hat and pull them out. Yeah. <laughs> and there'd be, there'd, be, this... there'd be an argument. And and the way I looked at it was um was players that, you know, possibly the lesser lights. I stayed away from the Declan Hannons. And uh, the Dermot Burnses of this world and the Garod Hegarty's and the Adam Galans, as I said, you know. Yeah. But um, I, I just concur totally with what you said about Declan Hannon, the most underappreciated hurler, I'd say, of his generation. Because yeah. he, he simply makes it look as if it's normal what he's doing. Some of the things he, he some of the things he does are totally off the charts. His anticipation, his covering. He's striking. You know, I'm absolutely convinced we could have won four in a row hadn't hadn't Declan Hannon gone off the field against Kilkenny. Yeah. I, I, I've said that because certainly with Kilkenny back to a point on a couple of times and and Declan Hannon would have had the leadership qualities to conjure up something that would, that, you know, that we would have got over the line on that one. Yeah. like it, it's good you, you, you'd, say, you'd say to yourself, how, how does your centre-back, you know, um, solve a problem where, where where you need scores, but he does it. Yeah, I think some of my thinking was if if I was opposition, who don't I want to see? Who are the lads you're saying, okay, Keen Lynch is missing, we have a chance here, Declan Hannon is out, you know, Hegarty is gone. That's yeah. the way kind of I was like, you'd hate to see, or like if you were in midfield, 
or if you were anywhere in the middle third and you saw Hannon, Donahue, Hegarty, Lynch, any of these boys, Hayes or Burns, Morris, even Kyle O'Neill, you're thinking, oh, I'm in for a long day here. That's kind of the way I was going about it. Look, if people have difference of opinions, they're more than welcome to come below and we can look at them next week or give your opinions on Instagram or Facebook or, or Twitter or whatever. It's just something different to, to come away from, from looking at games. Um, it's something I have no think. doubt, Jack, um, if, if, if we were live today, we would have a very animated discussion on it and <laughs> yeah, reaction. Right. 